right. Thanks for joining us for Science Around the World with Culp and Gold. Today we're going to talk to you again about protecting your body during a lab. So let's start with our I can statement. I can protect my body during a lab. I will identify the appropriate dress code for a lab and why the dress code is necessary. I will list the steps in order for how to correctly put on your safety goggles. I will demonstrate how to wear an apron during a lab, identify the various types of gloves, and when to use the gloves during a lab, and also demonstrate how to remove plastic gloves at the very end of your lab. We're going to start today with eye safety, very important. Step one is to inspect a pair of goggles. You're going to inspect them for damage, including cracks, holes, and missing vents. Miss Colt to demonstrate. Okay, so here's a pair of goggles. Here we see two vents on the back side. Up, Miss Gold, we have two missing vents. Anytime you have missing vents, cracks, or holes, you need to get a different pair of goggles. All right, now we need to deal with hair. Uh, before we begin a lab, we need to tie back the hair to ensure that it's out of your eyes and will not hang down in your face while you're looking down at the table. This is necessary for ladies and gentlemen, so guys, you're doing the same thing. I would recommend that you keep a hair bow, a hair band, or hair pins in your, locky, in your locker, I'm sorry, for easy access for labs. Okay, so I have a hair bow. Um, me and Miss Gold pull our hair back for labs too, so we will be following these instructions as well. Remember, you don't have to keep it like this throughout the rest of the day. All you need it for is science class. All right, now, step number three. Vents on the sides of the goggles, they can be kept open in order per, to prevent the goggles from fogging up as you wear them. So what we're saying is sometimes your goggles will fog up when you're wearing them, so the vents help with this. You can keep the vents open during the lab to help with that. This culp is opening the and vents. It's very easy. They simply, you simply pull them up. Alert, alert, alert! If we are using chemicals that release strong vapors that can irritate the eyes or using substances that will produce dust, then the vents should be closed. What we're saying here is if we're using strong chemicals, the vents have to be closed. Alert, alert, alert! If you wear glasses, you may wear the glasses underneath the goggles. As long as the goggles can still completely along your forehead, bridge of your nose, and your cheekbones. What we're saying here is if you wear glasses, you will wear your glasses during the lab. Step four, place the lenses over your eyes. So guess what? We're going to show you how to put some goggles on. Place the lenses over your eyes. Then adjust the goggles until they fit nicely along your forehead right above your eyebrow, over the bridge of your nose, and down your cheekbones. Make sure that no hair is trapped under those lenses. So here's Miss Culp. So I'm gonna make sure they fit over my nose. Okay, and no hair is trapped underneath. Very good. Pull the elastic band around the top of your head while holding the lens in place. So hold the lens in place and pull that elastic strap back over the top of your head, position the strap at the back of your head. Okay, so they're still in there. I'm going to pull the strap back over the top of my head. Okay. Step six, pull the elastic strap to tighten the goggles in place. Make sure that they are not causing extreme pain along the seal of the goggles. Tight, tight, tight. We do want to tell you that we expect your goggles to be somewhat uncomfortable, but not cause you extreme pain. Step seven, move your head up and down, then side to side to ensure that the goggles are securely in place. Notice they do not fall off. Step eight, do not remove the goggles until instructed to do so in order to prevent contamination 
at the conclusion of the lab. Miss Cole, my eye itches though. You cannot take your goggles off during the lab or in the lab, so if you have to do something, you'll have to go outside of the lab, fix it, and then come back in. But do not leave without permission. Step number nine, return goggles to the safety goggle sanitizing cabinet where they will be cleaned using ultraviolet UV rays. Periodically, disinfectant wipes will be used to remove dirt or body oils that build up on the goggles. Okay, so we take them off. Now, guys, please do not tighten the straps so much that they bend the goggles. Um, last year we had several break that way, and these are brand spanking new just for you, so please do not bend them and break them. Oh, body safety, step number two. Uh, cloth aprons, rubberized chemical resistant aprons, or polyethylene aprons are designed to protect your clothing and skin from chemical splashes or biological materials. So we have two different models. We have our plastic, but we also have our cloth, which is what we'll be using more often in class. Um, so here we see Ms. Gold's going to tie it around her neck. Sometimes you may need a partner to help you, and that's okay. Um, apron should be secured around your neck and waist, covering your torso. So if we look at Ms. Gold, we see her torso is covered. Aprons will be cleaned routinely after labs. Okay, and third, but not uh, finally, we're going to get to hand safety. Um, gloves are used to prevent direct contact with substances and to protect hands from heat. Plastic gloves are great for handling chemicals and cleaning up spills. They are designed to be disposable after one use. So we see Ms. Gold here, she has the plastic gloves. Um, again, they're designed to be used once and then thrown away. Alert, 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 alert! If you are allergic to latex, notify your teacher immediately to receive a latex-free pair of gloves. If you don't tell us, we won't know. When removing plastic gloves, peel them off starting at the wrist and working toward the fingers. Okay, so we're gonna put, a, I'm gonna put a pair of gloves on here for you first where I can show you how to take them off. Now notice that these are a one-size-fit-all gloves, so, um, we can't help that if they don't fit your hands perfectly. So I feel like a doctor, guys. Woo! Okay. <laughs> so we're going to peel them off starting at the wrist and working toward the fingers. Do not allow the outside of the gloves to make contact with the skin during removal in order to protect the skin from coming in contact with chemical residue. This is really important. We don't want to put the chemicals on your arm or any other piece. So we're going to grab it at the wrist. We're going to pull it off. Okay, notice now I have the inside is hanging out. I'm going to use the inside of the glove to grab the other one. And now they're both turned inside out and I can drop them in the trash can. Uh, heat resistant gloves and silicone rubber hand protectors are great for handling beakers that have been warmed to temperatures up to 260 degrees. Lots of different forms. Okay. So we've come to the end of our episode and we hope that you can say, I can protect my body during a lab. Meaning that your dress code, you have your face protected, your hands protected, and your body. Um, I will identify the appropriate dress code for a lab and why the dress code is necessary. I will list the steps in order for how to correctly put on safety goggles. I will demonstrate how to wear an apron during a lab. I will identify the various types of gloves and when to use the gloves in a lab. And I will demonstrate how to remove plastic gloves at the end of a lab.